Prime Minister Modi to hold the first ever virtual bilateral summit with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison today. The bilateral virtual summit signifies the strengthening of India's ties with Australia and its upward trajectory. The summit to be an opportunity for the two leaders to review the broad framework of the relationship. Prime Minister Modi says the long-pending agrarian reform approved by the Union Cabinet will have a very positive impact on the rural India, especially industrious farmers and the long-pending agrarian reforms will enable the transformation of the agriculture sector. Says the amendment to the Essential Commodities Act will ensure better income for farmers and would mean lesser regulatory influence. Cabinet approves the historic amendment to Essential Commodities Act. The decision affects a regulatory environment liberalized for farmers. The ordinance to promote barrier-free interstate and intrastate trade in agriculture produce approved. Cyclonic storm Nisarg weakens after hitting south of Alibag in the Raigarh district of Maharashtra. Mumbai spared major damage from the cyclone, except reports of uprooting of trees and waterlogging from some areas. The recovery rate in the COVID-19 cases in India increases to 48.31%. The active COVID-19 cases in India stand at 1,01,497 with over 1 lakh patients cured and discharged. The global COVID-19 cases continue to spiral out with nearly 64 lakh people infected and over 3,83,000 deaths reported. Hello and good morning. You're watching Doordarshan News with me, Nancy Kohli, your top story. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold a virtual conference with his Australian counterpart, Scott Morrison, today. This will be the first bilateral virtual summit of Prime Minister Modi with a foreign leader. Morrison was to visit India in January this year, but the visit could not take place as he had to tend to the raging bushfires in his country. Now, the two prime ministers have already met on four occasions on the sidelines of the multilateral meetings in the last one and a half years. Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Morrison have met four times during the last one and a half years on the sidelines of the East Asia Summit in Singapore. That was on 14th November 2018. Then on the sidelines of G20 in Osaka in Japan. That was on 29th of June 2019. Then on the margins of G7 Summit in Biarritz, 25th of August 2019. And then on the margins of the East Asia Summit in Bangkok. That took place on the 4th November last year. Now the relationship between the two nations was upgraded to a strategic partnership in 2009. The framework for security cooperation between Australia and India was signed in November 2014 during the visit of Prime Minister Modi to Australia. That historic visit also laid an action plan on the foreign, defence and security policy exchanges and coordination. Australia, in its White Paper on Foreign Policy 2017, has recognized India as the preeminent maritime power among the Indian Ocean countries and a front rank partner of Australia. During the last five years, the bilateral relations between both the countries have strengthened and expanded tremendously. Several new initiatives and bilateral or trilateral mechanisms such as foreign secretaries and the defense secretaries 2 plus 2 dialogue have been established since then. Australia has been supportive of India's position on the cross-border terror and asking Pakistan to take meaningful action against the terror groups operating from its soil. Australia, remember, has also co-sponsored the UNSC resolution to declare Masood the Azhar a global terrorist. Now, the virtual summit between the two leaders will also be an opportunity to discuss their respective responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. A number of MOUs and announcements are also being discussed by the officials. 
And to put this uh, virtual summit between uh, Prime Minister Modi and the Australian uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison today, we have a correspondent, uh, Amrit Pal Singh, joining us with more inputs uh, on that. Amrit, good morning. Uh, now, this virtual summit between uh, Prime Minister Modi and the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison is uh, very significant because apart from uh, you know, bilateral issues uh, relating to growth, investment, uh, you know, uh, discussing uh, global responses to the pandemic that we are all dealing with, the COVID-19, that's going to be also taking place. Uh, just take us through the important uh, discussions that are going to be taking place between the two leaders today. Uh, that's right, uh, Nancy. As you said, that uh, the uh, global responses and the individual countries' responses, both India and Australia, to the pandemic uh, so will uh, be a major point of discussion between the two prime ministers when they hold uh, their first ever virtual summit uh, today, uh, later in the day. Uh, Apart from that, uh, you know, uh, defense uh, and uh, maritime ties, cooperation, especially in the Indo-Pacific, uh, uh, reviewing uh, our, the whole gamut of relationships, including investments and trade, um, uh, would be the key focus. Now, essentially, uh, the focus would be to see, uh, to have a shared approach towards the free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific, because the two countries uh, have been cooperating on that front for a long time now. The two militaries have held, both the navies and the armies have held uh, various exercises uh, on that front. And uh, it could also very importantly set the stage to invite uh, Australia for the Malabar exercises in which the U.S. Uh, participates and the two countries have been working towards uh, that, though uh, the two countries have held many bilateral and mm -hmm. plural lateral and multilateral um, uh, military and naval exercises. Right. But if Australia uh, joins the Malabar exercises, that would be a first, that would be a, a great step forward towards uh, strengthening the military cooperation, especially in the Indo-Pacific, where the interests of both the countries uh, coincide. Mm. Uh, also, you know, we could see forward movement because we, uh, in the areas of uh, 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 the two countries uh, uh, strengthening their ties in uh, minerals, <coughs> because as you know, <coughs> Australia has a great reserve of sure. 21 out of the 49 rare earth metals, mm. and uh, India uh, has been very keen uh, on uh, taking that partnership forward because they are used in pr producing uh, lithium batteries uh, and uh, other electrical equipment. Right. So uh, we could see forward movement on that front. The military logistics okay. agreement we'd have to see where it goes but the two countries have been looking forward to signing the LSA and mm -hmm. if uh, we expect some MOUs to be signed in today's uh, summit but we have to see whether the LSA uh, mm -hmm. does uh, see a forward movement or gets ink uh, during this meeting between the two virtual meeting between the two prime ministers. Nancy? Absolutely. All right. Amrit, and you know, you mentioned about the MOUs and agreements that are likely to be inked today. Uh, any uh, inputs that you can share with us as far as, in fact, LSA also, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned about uh, that's going to be an important one. Uh, uh, and key areas that you're looking at, Amrit, uh, you know, that uh, could uh, uh, flourish between both the nations in the coming decade. Trade and investment is going to be a major area. Cooperation in minerals mm -hmm. and the military uh, area uh, would be uh, the key focus. Now we'll have to see uh, whether uh, 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 you know the wrinkles have been ironed out uh, mm -hmm. as far as inviting the Australians for the Malabar mm -hmm. exercise. We'll have to see whether that is announced at this virtual summit. Mm -hmm. Trade and investment, we could see uh, various uh, MOUs between uh, the signed between the two countries. Uh, especially in the field of minerals and taking that forward. We already have uh, that. Uh, Australia has invested in pension funds in India. Um, uh, we could see forward movement on that. Uh, uh, as you know, our global trade uh, uh, between the two countries is uh, uh, close to about $21 billion. So uh, we could uh, see various MOUs to see that how that uh, uh, aspect can be further improved. Uh, ranging from, uh, as I said, uh, minerals to investments to uh, in various sectors to military cooperation. So we could sure. see uh, the essentially uh, the agreements that would be signed here would be a, uh, would be primarily military okay. uh, uh, and strategic in nature, and right. also focusing on taking the trade and investment forward. Okay. All right, Amrit, thanks very much for joining us for the moment and sharing all those details. We'll, of course, uh, be uh, touching base with you uh, once again later on in the day to get keep getting regular inputs on that. Thanks very much for now.
And moving on now to the next big story. Well, after hitting the Maharashtra's coastal area, Raigad with an Alibag with a wind speed of up to 120 kilometers per hour on Wednesday afternoon, Cyclone Nisarg weakened into a cyclonic storm in the evening. And as per the IMD, the cyclone weakened into a deep depression and further the deep depression over interior Maharashtra moved northeastwards and lay centered about 70 kilometers east of Nashik. It is likely to weaken into a depression during the next few hours. And as soon as cyclone weakened, the NDRF team started relief and rehabilitation work. Overall, the worst has passed and the cyclone situation was well negotiated because of the timely preparations and coordination between center and the state. Heavy rain occurred at isolated places in Maharashtra and fishermen have been advised to not venture into the east central and the northeast Arabian Sea. Mumbai, in fact, was spared major damage from the cyclone, except reports of uprooting of trees and water logging from some areas. And let's now go across uh, to our correspondent, Shishir Shalar, who's joining us this morning uh, for more updates on that. Shishir, good morning. Uh, well, Mumbai has escaped that major uh, damage from the cyclone, and that's a good news for all of us. And uh, But, you know, the evacuation had already happened. Timely preparations had saved uh, many uh, from the extent of damage and the loss of lives. The situation, if you talk about today, this morning, uh, Shishir, what can you share with us? Well, uh, Nancy, at this point in time, the situation is quite normal here. It's uh, uh, sunny and, you know, it's morning in Mumbai, basically. Yesterday, we have seen that clouds were all over in Mumbai and especially the coastal belt of Maharashtra. But today, as a cyclone have moved towards the northeast region and has have gone towards the Nashik uh, region here, now the Mumbai in the coastal area, uh, the normal sea has returned to it. Now, yesterday, when the, uh, the cyclone hit at the Konkan region, especially the Raigad and Alibak places, we have seen here that uh, the wind speed was actually touching 120 kilometers. But later on, Fortunately, it got weakened and also changed the direction and went towards the northeast toward region. Well, later on, IMD also predicted that uh, the people has to be, uh, especially in these areas, uh, these areas will receive a rainfall and that's the reason people has to be indoors. Uh, in wise, uh, no, the BMC have also said that uh, people should not come out because it's quite early. But now, since morning, we haven't seen a Mumbai, no, there's any rain in Mumbai also or any wind speed here as the normalcy completely returned to this area, entire area and the entire the Konkan region as well. Well, talking about the preparation, as we were talking yesterday, the NDRF team were actually stationed at various places in Maharashtra, especially in the Konkan region and the Palgar and Thane region. And they have started their work immediately after the, you know, uh, the cyclone weekend here. Uh, especially in uh, Alibag and in Raigad region that we have seen the trees were uprooted and the teen roofs of the houses were actually divorced because of the cyclone. And uh, the, the, the NDRF team started rescuing people and rehabilitation work here. The Maharashtra chief minister along with the chief secretary was keeping very close eye on this entire situation here they had a meeting also and as soon as the cyclone weakened uh, you know, the authorities have been told that to assess the situation into the entire region here especially the region where it has been predicted uh, that supposed to go like mumbai thane palgar raigad alibag these are the areas even the konkan areas the ratnagari and sindurga region as well well, at this point in time, uh, it, uh, the cyclone has actually uh, turned into a depression uh, as it was earlier, severe cyclonic uh, storm, mm -hmm. as, and then it was turned into a cyclonic storm and now deep depression. The uh, latest details we've got is that the IMD said it's going to do a, a depression only. And that's the reason uh, right now uh, the replication of the cyclone and the depression is quite low here. Uh, now, as it has moved toward the Nasik region, probably we may see some of the impact on that particular region itself. Well, the most important fact is that uh, it's not just because of cyclone, but the Mumbai is also hitting because of uh, the COVID-19 situation here. And that's the reason uh, the, the precautions taken by the state government. Actually, it's walking on a, a tight rope here because it, at one hand, they have to take care of the COVID-19 situation also. At the other hand, the cyclonic condition of hovering around the city. And that's what the major problem for them. But successfully, the state government in association with the central government have handled the situation. Yes. All right, uh, Shishu, thanks very much for joining us for the moment and uh, sharing all those inputs. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Moving on now, the Essential Commodity Act has been amended to remove cereals, pulses, oil seeds, edible oils, onions and potatoes from the list of essential commodities. However, in times of natural calamities and in case of extraordinary inflation, these prices can be regulated. The Cabinet has approved the Farming Produce Trade and Commerce Promotion and Facilitation Ordinance 2020. It will pave the way for one India, one agriculture market. Here's more.
Cabinet has approved a historic amendment to the Essential Commodities Act. This is a visionary step towards transformation of agriculture and raising farmers' income. With the amendment to the Essential Commodities Act, commodities like cereals, pulses, oil seeds, edible oils, onions and potatoes will be removed from the list of essential commodities. This will remove fears of private investors of excessive regulatory interference. The freedom to produce, hold, move, distribute and supply will lead to harnessing of economies of scale and attract private sector foreign direct investment into the agriculture sector. It will help drive up investment in cold storages and modernization of food supply chain. कृषि के बारे में ऐतिहासिक फैसले हुए हैं किसान की 50 साल से जो मांगे थी वो आज पूरी हो रही है पहला अत्यावश्यक कानून इसेंशियल कमोडिटीज एक्ट अत्यावश्यक वस्तु कानून उसमें किसान हितैषी सुधार किए गए हैं और इसका परिणाम होगा कि किसान को अच्छी कीमत मिलेगी अनाज तेल तिलहन दाल प्याज आलू ऐसी वस्तुएं इसेंशियल कमोडिटीज एक्ट से बाहर कर दिए गए अब किसान को तय प्लान के अनुसार वो निर्यात कर सकता है भंडारण कर सकता है ये सब सहूलतें उसको मिलेगी द गवर्नमेंट वाई लिबरलाइजिंग द रेगुलेटरी एनवायरमेंट has also ensured that interests of consumers are safeguarded it has been provided in the amendment that in situations such as war famine extraordinary price rise and natural calamity such agricultural food stuff can be regulated however the install capacity of a value chain participant and the export demand of an exporter will remain exempted from such stock limit imposition so as to ensure that investments in agriculture are not discouraged the amendment announced will help both farmers and consumers while bringing in price stability it will also prevent wastage of agri produce that happens due to lack of storage facilities agriculture producer market committee ke bandhan se kisan mukt hua hai kisan kahi bhi utpadan bech sakega zyada dam dene wale ko bechne ki azadi mili hai kisan ko zyada kimaton ke guarantee par कृषि उपज समझौते से बेचने के किसान को अनुमति मिली है यानी कोई निर्यातक है कोई प्रोसेसर है कोई दूसरे पदार्थों का उत्पादक है तो उसको कृषि उपज दोनों के आपसी समझौता जो होगा उसके तहत बेचने की सुविधा आज मिली है जिससे सप्लाई चेन खड़ी होगी भारत में पहली दफा ऐसा कदम उठाया गया है इन अनदर हिस्टोरिक डिसीजन दैट विल बूस्ट बैरियर फ्री ट्रेड इन एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूस कैबिनेट इज प्रोवाइडेड द फार्मिंग प्रोड्यूस ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स प्रमोशन एंड फेसिलिटेशन ऑर्डिनेंस 2020 द ऑर्डिनेंस बेसिकली एम्स एट क्रिएटिंग एडिशनल ट्रेडिंग ऑपर्चुनिटीज आउटसाइड द एपीएमसी मार्केट यार्ड्स टू हेल्प फार्मर्स गेट रिम्यूनरेटिव प्राइसेस due to additional competition it will certainly pave the way for creating one india one agriculture market is ordinance ke madhyam se sarkar ki ek koshish hai ki kisan par jo apne utpadan ko bechne ke liye pratibandh lage the un pratibandhon se puri tarah mukt kiya ja raha hai mandiya rahengi राज्य का एपीएमसी एक्ट रहेगा लेकिन एपीएमसी की परिधि के बाहर जो सारा क्षेत्र है चाहे वो किसान का घर ही क्यों ना हो उस घर में जाकर भी कोई कंपनी संस्था प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्री एफपीओ कॉपरेटिव सेक्टर के समूह कोई भी जाकर उसको उत्पादन का उचित मूल्य देकर वहां से माल खरीदेगा मंडी की परधि के बाहर 
पूरा ट्रेड एरिया होगा जहां पर ट्रेड हो सकती है और इस खरीद और बिक्री पर किसी भी प्रकार का कोई टैक्स किसी सरकार का नहीं होगा कानूनी बंधन किसी भी प्रकार का नहीं होगा The third decision is approval to the Farmers Empowerment and Protection Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Services Ordinance 2020. This will empower farmers to engage with processors, aggregators, wholesalers, large retailers, exporters. This ordinance will act as a catalyst to attract private sector investment for building supply chains for supply of Indian farm produce to global markets. Farmers will get access to technology and advice for high value agriculture and get ready market for such produce. Farmers will engage in direct marketing thereby eliminating intermediaries resulting in full realization of price. Farmers have been provided adequate protection and effective dispute resolution mechanism has been provided for with clear timelines for redressal. These landmark decisions will benefit farmers and transform the agriculture sector. These steps are only the latest in a series of measures taken by the government which shows its continuous commitment to championing the cause of welfare of the hard working farmers of India. DD News. And the Prime Minister Modi has said that uh, the cabinet decisions will have a very positive impact on rural India especially our industrious farmers. Prime Minister Modi in a series of tweet has said I quote the cabinet decisions will have a very positive impact on rural India especially our industrious farmers he added that the long pending agrarian reforms will enable the transformation of the sector the prime minister said that the amendment to the essential commodities act will ensure better income for farmers furthermore it would mean lesser regulatory influence greater investment in food processing cold storages and having modern supply chains he further added that the farming produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation ordinance 2020 will pave the way for the creation of one india one agriculture market prime minister modi also said that farmers empowerment and protection agreement on price assurance and farm services ordinance 2020 approved by the cabinet will ensure our farmers get greater freedom to engage with processors wholesalers large retailers exporters while also protecting farmers interests and court and farmers uh, from across the country have hailed the historic cabinet decisions listen in सरकार ने आज माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में जो किसानों के हित में फैसले लिए हैं वो बहुत ही सराहनीय और हम सब किसान इसकी दूर दूर प्रशंसा करते हैं अब हम सब किसान अपने माल को कहीं भी बेच सकेंगे कहीं भी आ डाले सकेंगे जिससे हमारे अपने माल को अच्छा दाम मिल सकेगा और साथ ही साथ भंडारण की जो सुविधा प्रदान की गई है उससे भी बहुत सारे किसानों को सहूलियतें मिलेंगी सरकार का जो स्कीम आया है किसानों के लिए माल अपना कहीं से भी कहीं ले जा कर बेच सकते हैं और इस पर टैक्स गवर्नमेंट ने टैक्स भी जो है जो लगता था चार्ज उसको उन्होंने माफ़ कर दिया है तो इससे किसानों के लिए बहुत फायदा होगा और आगे चल के किसान इससे लाभान्वित And an update now as far as the number of uh, COVID-19 cases worldwide is concerned. In fact, uh, globally, the COVID-19 numbers continue to rise as more than 64.29 lakh people have been infected globally, and uh, a total of uh, uh, 4,776 COVID-19 patients have. been uh, in fact cured first talking about india in the last 24 hours and a total of uh, 1,303 patients have been cured of covid-19 so far the recovery rate is 48.31% amid among the covid-19 patients and presently there are 1,1497 active cases and all are under active medical supervision this is in fact talking about india figures first india fighting covid-19 there the fertility rate is 2.8% the testing capacity in fact has increased in the country through 480 government and 208 private laboratories in total 688 laboratories moving on now to facilitate the migrant uh, workers stranded at different places by special trains the indian railways has operationalized 4197 shramik special trains across the country till the 3rd of june More than 58 lakh migrant workers have been transported through Shramik special trains since the 1st of May. Over 50 lakh passengers have been transported in the month of May alone. Now these trains were originated from various states. 
The maximum number of trains have originated from Gujarat, followed by Maharashtra, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. The states where maximum shramik special trains terminated are Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha and West Bengal. And in addition to the shramik specials, railways are also running 15 pairs of special Rajdhani trains from the 12th of May and 100 pairs of special mail or the express from the 1st of June for pilgrims, tourists, students and other persons stranded. And let's now take a look at the COVID-19 cases worldwide. The global COVID-19 numbers continue to rise as more than 64.29 lakh people have been infected globally. The deaths have unfortunately surpassed 3.85 lakhs. Brazil has reported over 5.5 lakh confirmed cases of COVID-19. The U.S. has the highest number of cases worldwide with more than 18.5 lakh people infected followed by Brazil. And uh, with that, it's a wrap on this uh, edition of the news. But before we go, a check on the headlines. Prime Minister Modi to hold the first ever virtual summit uh, with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison today. The bilateral virtual summit signifies the strengthening of India's ties with Australia and its upward trajectory. The summit to be an opportunity for the two leaders to review the broad framework of the relationship. Mr. Modi says the long pending agrarian reforms approved by the cabinet will have a very positive impact on rural India, especially the industrious farmers and the long pending agrarian reforms will enable the transformation of the agriculture sector. Says the amendment to the Essential Commodities Act will ensure better income for farmers and would also mean less regulatory influence. Cabinet approves the historic amendment to Essential Commodities Act. The decision affects regulatory environment liberalized for farmers. The ordinance to promote barrier-free interstate and interstate trade in agriculture produce approved. Cyclonic storm Nisarg weakens after hitting south of Alibag in the Raigarh district of Maharashtra. Mumbai spared major damage from the cyclone, except reports of uprooting of trees and waterlogging from some areas. The recovery rate in COVID-19 cases in India increases to 48.31%. The active COVID-19 cases in India stand at 1,01,497 with over 1 lakh patients cured and discharged. The global COVID-19 cases continue to spiral out with nearly 64 lakh people infected and over 3,83,000 deaths reported. That's all in this newscast, but news and updates will continue here on Doordarshan News and DD India. Thanks very much for being with us.